Hello. Surprise. And welcome <laughs> to the morning meeting presenting John Boy Media. I am Maddie. That is not Jimmy. It is Courtney. And we are very excited to get into this episode today, everybody. It is a special episode today because Courtney is with us filling in for Jimmy as he has a ton of Cricket World Cup responsibilities to handle. Um, so Courtney is with us today. We will be going through all of your questions like normal and catching up on some of the business things going on at John Boy Media. So with that being said, leave any questions that you would like answered next week and we might have a different special guest host as the Cricket World Cup continues. So leave any questions you have and while you're down there, press like, press subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, let's get into this. Courtney, how are you? Thanks, Maddie. I'm great. Can okay. we talk about how crazy it is that this I'm is, here? Yes. Right? This is a moment. Well, this is your second time on the morning meeting. You were here before. And what is this? You're like third time actually on yeah, camera. Maybe my third time doing like a podcast. And when I first was hired here, I said, I'm never doing content ever. I am a behind the scenes business person. Um, and then I get, did two shows, but I kind of had the comfort of a uh, lead creator and Jimmy here on morning meeting. So right. My first time without him. You're Feel like the I'm lead. growing up. You're the lead. <laughs> I'm creator the lead. Now. Shit. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> yes. Um, but that is all because now you are like a LinkedIn influencer, I think, or oh, something God. like that. Oh God, I'm trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, before we get there, I did want to touch on looping back to last episode because Jimmy mentioned going to Disneyland Paris and he got lost as a child. So I figured. He mentioned that last episode with you here this episode. We need somebody else's perspective. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. can you walk us through? Because sure. Jimmy said that he oftentimes would like deviate from the group in order mm -hmm. to like go think, do what he thought was better. Like he thought, oh, the line is shorter over here. I'm exiting mm, over here. That's a little bit like different from my okay, recollection. Okay. Okay. That, see, now this yeah. is why I yeah. asked. <laughs> And for those of you who don't know, I'm Courtney Hirsch. I'm the CEO of John Boy Media. I run the business side of the operations. I'm also Jimmy's sister. So that's why I uh, <laughs> I know this story that he was talking yeah, about from his childhood. But um, Jimmy is, when he gets mad, he likes to um, sulk. Maybe there's a nicer word for that. Okay. He likes alone time. He yeah. likes to fester in his feelings. And he did this throughout childhood. So we were at Disneyland Paris. It was my mom, me, uh, Jimmy, and my other sister, and then my grandmother, who was not feeling well, and she was in a wheelchair. Okay. And we were leaving the park, and Jimmy was mad because, I don't know, like my mom wouldn't buy him something, or he probably wanted to stand and go on another ride. And my mom was doing that thing where, like, your kid is like kind of drifting off and sulking and you're trying not to pay mm -hmm. them any attention. Right. Right. So like you think if like we just ignore them and keep on walking, like they're eventually going to like snap out of it, snap out of it and like come up and meet us. So she like kept on looking behind her shoulder and then all of a sudden like the park really closed and there was just like a flood of people going out the gates. So we lost him in that crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so my mom's strategy kind of backfired on her a little yes, bit because sure. then we were like, oh shit, like we started freaking out. Um, it was hard cause you know, we were speaking a different language mm -hmm. and I just remember so vividly, I was 12 years old at the time and my mom's like, wheel your grandmother and take your sister who's eight years old and go to the hard rock cafe and just like wait there for us. Like I'm going to find Jimmy. <laughs> So we waited for like 45 minutes, an hour, like it felt that long. And um, I don't know how she found him, but she came back with him. Okay. <laughs> and I think that was like the last time he ever like sulked and like left right. that much distance between us. <sighs> See, now I think if I remember correctly, he said... He, the way he explained it last week is that everybody just met up at the Hard Rock Cafe because that was like the meeting point. If anybody were to get lost, you mm. had predetermined that as the meeting point. Yeah, I but don't perhaps think so. not the case. No, okay, I don't and you think were so. you're older, so yeah, I was like we'll strong take your older word. sister vibes, right. you know, <laughs> taking care of the situation. Okay, I'll take your word on it. Um, before we dive into all of the topics of the day, uh, this is an exciting day because your son is here. Oh Ike. yeah. Yeah, How is his son's... day? How's your day with him in the office? It's awesome. I came to work with me today. It's election day in our town, so they didn't have school. 
and he didn't want to stay home with his two younger siblings. Um, so he looked at me and he said, can I come into the office and lounge all day? <laughs> <laughs> and that's him hanging out in our live stream lounge on and off of his tablet, eating a lot of office snacks. Yeah. My, the highlight of the day is seeing him run to the kitchen, get a snack, <laughs> run back. Like we didn't see him. Right. Yes. Yeah, he's sneaking yes. around. Yeah. Um, but Brian Park for kids. We went there. We yep. sat outside, ate lunch. They have free Jenga, free Connect Four, Candyland. So we like went there and played a bunch of those games. Um, and then I got him ice cream afterwards and we went to pay for our ice cream and the man said, oh no, the stranger before you paid for three people's ice cream okay. for free. I feel so like, like that's only on like YouTube. I, see I know. I've never seen that. So I've had the best day and now we're actively thinking of like what Ike and I could do to pay it forward. Thinking of an act of kindness. That sure. Works. Has he come up with anything? His idea was to ask a stranger that was walking down the street if they wanted a ride because we have a car. Okay. But then he got nervous that they were going to want to go to the airport and he doesn't want to go to the airport. Okay. Right now. Yeah. So we're, we're sure. still thinking. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, that makes sense. That's not why I would be nervous picking up a stranger, but it's a valid concern. It's valid. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. Let's let's dive into some of the more businessy John Boy Media insights um we wanted to start off uh with the uh new announcement oh what's the new announce oh fanatics fest yes because I, yes. I don't think people okay. on this show so, have been privy to that knowledge. yes fanatics fest is uh announced it's live right now um fanatics is putting on kind of this three-day sports immersive experience it's kind of like comic-con but mm. for sports and there is going to be athletes, celebrities, all of the leagues have a presence. There's going to be live shows. So we are really excited. Um, we got asked to be a part of it. So we are going to be putting on a two hour like interactive John Boy Media baseball theme show. Um, it's Friday, August 16th. And it, we're excited about it because um, it will be the first time like we're doing a full two hour set that is really creative and pulls from a lot of different um, talent and like programming that we have going on. So, yeah, it should be fun to like get our whole team together and like be part of this bigger thing that Fanatics is doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think the ideas right now are kind of if you were at Jolly's trivia event, it would be like that where there is a live ref guess and um, there's going to be a ump show between Jack and Zoe who can get the right call, stuff like that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then in addition to that, some of our like more baseball podcasty. Type yep. They're going to have segments. Gonna... Um, we're going to pull in like, you know, Jolly will have talk about the Mets. Shelfie will talk about Phillies. Yep. Um, maybe Kelsey will call in. Maybe Peter is going to fly up. So it's going to be like the whole John Boy Media crew. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And then we're also going to be there all of the days. Yes. So then we're also talking about having like an interactive booth um, more on the main floor and like uh, the leagues will each have a presence there like NFL, MLB, and we're going to have a John Boy Media warehouse games booth and we're thinking through right now what that's going to look like. Maybe it's um, at bats against some of our creators. We got ice will be there. Maybe we'll do some like warehouse game style activities. So Still thinking through that, but yep. it will be like fun to really be on the ground, interact with fans. Um, we're going to sell merch and like the whole John Boy Media crew will be there kind of helping yeah. out. Yeah, that is for anybody interested. That will be starting Friday, August 16th um, at the New York City Javits Center. So more details to come. Yeah, I'm more sure. details but to come. Just something exciting. Yeah, on the back I'm excited end. about that. Another exciting thing is that Jimmy made his World Cup debut since our last episode. Um, I know that I was up and I felt like people say live tweeting. I felt like I was live slacking the event. Oh, yeah. and like Aaron Jones just did this. Post it, post it. Um, so sorry to all of our employees that got all of my live slacks. But um, yeah, Jimmy made his World Cup debut. Uh, what were you watching the game? I was watching the game. Okay. I what was that experience like? It was so fun, and I didn't know what to expect. Well, for the first quarter of the game, before we heard Jimmy's voice sure. on the broadcast, yeah. I felt like I was just going to throw up. 
the entire time. Because you were just, nervous. I was just so nervous for him. Like I knew he was like a little bit out of his element and like feeling uncomfortable. And I was just like, ooh, I just need to hear his voice and like get it rolling. And it's going to put all of us at ease. But like yeah. our family group chat was going off without Jimmy. Like, right. did you hear him yet? Did you hear him yet? Trying not to make him nervous. Yeah. <laughs> but we were all like dying. Um, but I had a lot of fun. I had friends um, watch it with me and... They were huge Rangers fans, and it was like... Rangers game six was that yes, night. Rangers game six. And they put the Rangers game on the phone, on their phone, on right. the small TV. Yeah, and we had the Cricket the World Cup right. uh, game that they've never watched before on yeah. the big TV. Uh, but we got super into it. Like, we were, like, just having so much fun trying to figure out the rules together. Right. And then once we started to, like, oh, like, figure, like, out the overs and, like... Some of the like the power plays. Yeah. Um, it felt like a team effort of us trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah, and yeah. then like we were winning together when we um started getting the hang of it. Uh and then we thought the game was just like, did you watch the whole game? Yeah. Yeah. So we thought we were like done. And we're oh. like, this is so boring, this is pathetic. The Losing US to Canada? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That's what we thought. Kidding me? Uh, and then it just was like the best comeback ever. Awesome. So we were all on the edge of our seats. For now, a sport we've never watched before. Oh, it was crazy. I so Jimmy retweeted some of these after the game ended, but there were so many people like, oh my gosh, like ball and play has taught me cricket. Like I was able to watch that game and understand mm. what was happening yeah. without like too many hurdles. And that's the experience for me. I hadn't watched, sat down and watched a cricket, real cricket game before. So yeah, it's funny that the ball and play knowledge and something that we've all been working on together has like come through full circle and as full circle as can be because the pairing um, that was batting when the USA won was A, Aaron Jones, who went on yeah. some crazy streak. It was crazy. And then Corey Anderson, who was um, in the warehouse way like when the warehouse still looked oh like, he was in the warehouse oh I yeah i forgot about that yeah yeah yeah. so them two hugging at yeah. the end i was like oh look at yeah, this it's so perfect warehouse Full circle yeah <laughs> um so that was really fun um did your friends did you felt like they caught on to the game by oh the my end? god yeah they were like screaming they're like it's a sixer <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> like we have no idea we're making up our own terms yeah. but we were texting about it the next day they're right. like okay like well, what match are we gonna watch next yeah, together yeah, yeah. like what <laughs> it um, was awesome jimmy was on like you could see jimmy obviously you could hear yeah. him throughout but he was he came on the screen as well did everybody go like crazy and did what was the family group chat once jimmy oh like, yeah made his debut? yes once jimmy made his debut the family group chat was Good. popping off right. we all were like oh he sounds so like calm and like collected and like right. he just sounded so in his element so it was just really cool to hear him and then like I you know seeing like the really nice comments online and just being open to the different voice and being accepted into that world I yep. think was like really cool from a business perspective but also like a personal perspective as well for sure um, I know we just did our floorball three planning meeting and Jimmy was already taking things that he learned from like the two cricket game broadcasts that he's done and it's like mm. oh let's put that in the broadcast oh in that's the cool warehouse. so yeah, yeah that's cool yeah it's a good learning for us for sure um before we get into anything else mm -hmm. i do want to tell you about the farmer's dog because every day more p dog people and more vets are quitting the kibble kicking the cans and feeding their dog food that's actually food uh, the farmer's dog is developed with vets and made fresh from real meat and veggies portioned for your dog and delivered right to your door the cool part about uh, farmer's dog is that it is specific for your dog so whether you know you have a puppy or I won't use the wording that Jimmy used last week, oh, but gosh. if you have a dog that's on the older end, <laughs> the farmer's dog is able to uh, personalize the uh, dog food experience specifically for them and based on their unique uh, nutritional needs. It is smart, healthy pet food that you can feel good about feeding to your pup. So it doesn't matter the age. It's always the right time to begin investing in your dog's health Help keep your dog healthy and playing ball with 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash morning meeting, both with G's on the end. Plus, you get free shipping. So just go to thefarmersdog.com slash morning meeting to get 50% off now. Um, okay, I mentioned this at the top yeah. of the show. 
but I do want to dive into it with you because I thoroughly enjoy and drop likes as much as I see your videos on LinkedIn. For anybody that also wants to see all of the stuff that you're doing behind the scenes, go check out Courtney's LinkedIn because it is one of my favorite experiences. I open LinkedIn only when the app like notification yeah. badge gets too high for my liking. Oh, like okay. Once I see okay. like seven or eight, yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. you got to deal with this. So I go <laughs> open it, press the notifications tab just to clear those because mm -hmm. it's like not, it's nonsense. Yeah. Most yeah. Of the time. Yeah. And then go back to home and you're always like the first thing. Um, so above all else, mm -hmm. before we dive into like the specifics of the different videos you've made, yeah, what has prompted you or like what has inspired you to do like video creation through LinkedIn? So that's a good question. I think a year ago um, when I first moved over to this role, I used to be more focused on um, leading the sales team and I yep. moved over to the business role. And one of our advisors um, and my mentor, Deirdre Lester, she, I had meetings with her every week. And one of the things she said to me is like, you need to put yourself out there more. Like you need to go on panels. You need to represent the brand. And that is free awareness. Like what sure. an efficient way to get awareness for your company. And I knew she was right, but I was so nervous to do it. Yep. And I just had a pit in my stomach about embarrassing myself and putting myself out there. Yep. So I started smaller with like just committing to like two posts a week on LinkedIn. And I mostly, these were like written posts. Um, and then I kind of just built, felt, built more confidence and had fun with it and started posting more video content. Yep. And then once I started posting video content, I thought that was scarier at first to put myself out on video and be sure. more, more vulnerable, but yep. I can, I, writing kind of trips me up mm. and I like talking yeah. way more. Makes sense. So now the videos are almost easier than yeah. like doing a post that like has to be like really thought out and well written. No, that makes yeah. sense. Um, specifically some of these videos, um, you talk a lot about your work life balance. You're mm -hmm. obviously a mom. We've yeah. discussed that. Um, can you speak to that and, and how do you balance your time being the CEO of a sports media startup and also ensuring that you're like, uh, you know, catering to your home needs as, as yeah. well? Yeah. I think my kids, you know, my family just really helped me put boundaries around things mm. and kind of prioritize balance because they have needs that need to be met and I need to be there for them. Yep. Um, but I think balance is like, it's a lot of pressure. And I think being a career um, executive and then having a family and then always trying to think about how to perfectly balance a situation kind of puts too much pressure on the situation for mm -hmm. me. So I like to think of it just as more like a, a broader eye view of like, a month's perspective, like how did I do this week? How sure. did I do in the quarter? And every day can't be perfectly balanced and that's okay. One week could be really busy at work and then one week I could spend a lot more time with my family and just trying to take the pressure off being perfectly balanced almost like helps out the situation more. Sure. No, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I also think that like we've set up a culture here that is very accommodating. Like obviously your son is here yes. today and like yeah. that might not be the case. Oh, I know my places. aunt said like her, um, my kids are not allowed in her office yeah. and I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. And then I was like, oh no, I think we're the weird ones. No, I think <laughs> That's so. That's just I like so. accepting, yeah. but that is just normal to oh, see yeah. like kids are on the office here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like a good thing too. Yeah. Um, you, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe today or maybe yesterday, the most recent video was mm -hmm. the first one that you branded as oh, Full Court Press. Full Court Press, yes. yes. <laughs> hey, where did you come up with that? And like, who made that logo and everything? Sarah made the logo. I okay. love it because yes, I wanted cool. it to be like super girly yeah. because it already has like the sports theme and the yeah. name. Um, I came up with the name. I think it's just cute and fun. Yep. And I liked how it had a sports theme to it. And then full court press meaning this means like, to, you know, like be strong and go all in on something. And yep. like, that's how seriously I take my um, role at the company. And just, I'm just like a super driven, like 
all or nothing type of person sure. and then like cork because my name and then press because yeah. like i'm giving my thoughts and no i like that i love it <laughs> i think it's super creative yeah someone thought i was doing a basketball podcast and right. i'm like i am not not <laughs> yet doing a basketball not podcast. yet <laughs> um can you with that mentality in mind can you just speak to um two different business points that you've brought yeah. up that i found valuable from your linkedin the first being the importance of having a mentor. Um, mm -hmm. You've alluded to it with your connection and with Deirdre. Yeah. Um, but can you just relay to everybody just the importance of having somebody in your life that can fulfill that mentor role? Yeah, I think it's e extremely important. Um, and I think that the expectations of what a mentor is should be redefined because I don't think it's like has to be this formal thing where like, we have like monthly meetings and then this is, you know, the agenda and this is what I hope to get out of them. And the, the, I think it's really important to have like goals and a vision for yourself. And I think that's everyone's responsibility for themselves. You can't seek uh, or ask other people what your goals should be, but you can then lean on them. Like, how do I accomplish these goals and use them as a sounding board? Mm -hmm. So that's been helpful for me throughout my career. I also constantly am thinking about the people that are mentors to me. Maybe they know that, maybe they don't, and that's okay, but I view them as a mentor, and I'm constantly thinking, how am I gonna deliver them value, mm. right? Because I really want it to be like a two-way relationship, and I want them to keep on mentoring me and helping me out. So like, even I met uh, Deirdre for lunch the other day, and I'm like, what do I know about the industry or like mm. building a business that I could share with her during this lunch that she's gonna find valuable? Right. And that's when I find you get like the best relationships. Like if you're just thinking of it as like a one-way, like help me, I need your advice. Yeah. Like it's, I don't think it's gonna sustain. Oh, okay. That's a, yeah. no, I think that's awesome insight. Mm -hmm. it's something that I hadn't thought of before. Yeah. And just also the point that you mentioned in passing, like a mentor doesn't necessarily need to know that you view them that way. Right. Like you could just have a yes. yeah. connection with somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other point that I wanted you to just hit on is the, the idea of L10 meetings, which yes. I people know. are not going to know I what know. that is. I know. It sounds crazy. I sound crazy so when I say gonna it. you're going to have to explain what A, L10 meetings are, but then also like your yes. insight on them. Okay. So L10 meetings come from this, it's called EOS, and that stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System. And it's basically, uh, I don't know what they call themselves, a business where they have developed um, specific business practices, like how to run your meetings or how to set goals, how to evaluate employees to run your operation. So a lot of startups have used or implemented EOS because they are growing so fast and like kind of just like treading water and like catching all the opportunity and it's harder to like build a system from scratch. So it's really cool to just be like, hey, we're going to implement EOS. We're not going to have to think or debate about how often we should meet, what our meetings look like. We're just right. going to integrate this into our business Makes as sense. we're like, you know, growing like crazy. So that um, has, has worked really well for me and, and I hope the entire team. And one of the things that I think we do really well is we change are the structure of our leadership meeting. Yeah. And it's now an L10 meeting, which stands for level 10 meeting. The name like still makes me laugh because it's okay. kind of silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what I love about it is that it is very consistent. You know what you're going to get. So we do it the same exact time, Tuesdays at noon now. We just changed it. So everyone has a little bit more energy earlier in the day. And the first part of the meeting is going through our... Um, metrics and the metrics that we follow are revenue metrics and then also community growth metrics and community engagement metrics if we're on or off track to our goal what are our priorities for the quarter and we say if we're on or off track then we have a headline section each department gives headlines like this employee's crushing it like we this client is really happy oh like we're having an issue rolling out this initiative like let's talk about it and then if we need to talk about something it actually goes down to a different section like we'll kick it down to what we call like issues and opportunities to discuss and that's where we spend time 
um, just collaborating as a team and talking through problems. And we always like to just make a decision in the meeting and then put it up on our to-do list and follow Mm -hmm. up whether that got done next meeting. So I like it, but like I like structure. I think it was probably a big change for the team going from kind of more loosey goosey meetings to like, wow, this is like militant, but I don't know. What do you think, Maddie? No, <laughs> I, I definitely am somebody that likes structure too. Um, I think that the, the real benefit is just being able to know that this is a time to share X and this is a time to share Y. So like mm-hmm. you're saying, at the beginning, we have headlines. So these are things that might not involve a long form discussion, but hey, these are just good things for all of us as leaders to know. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, yeah, then if there's a convo that can shoot off, yeah, we can move it down to the issues or opportunities to discuss. So that's what I really like is just knowing, hey, for the next five minutes of this meeting, yeah. I'm going to just more or less be listening to headlines. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if there's something that needs to be moved, we could always have that convo. But then oh now is the time to like yeah let's like problem solve and um i i'm also which is why i enjoy doing the note taking Mm -hmm. i loved like being able to do the hey what's coming next and like assigning that as on a as micro as possible so that there's like a direct person and with steps and everything we're getting a lot more stuff moving yeah exactly exactly so i really enjoy them yeah um one of the things that we discuss a lot in these L10 meetings, and also, do you know why they're called level 10? What I does that mean? I think it's just because, like, the best, like, level 10, oh, like, best. 10 out of 10. Right, right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, one of the things that we discuss in our leadership meeting a lot is just the overarching business expansion models mm-hmm. that we can put out. So that could be licensing, that could be partnerships, or that could just be like new ventures that are related to what we're doing, but uh, you know, going a step beyond and, and finding something new. The example there would be Snapchat, right? We've recently launched a Snapchat and we were doing all the other socials and it's similar, but mm-hmm. it is different. Um, Do you mind walking us through? Because I feel like right now we're in an exciting point in John Boy Media where this is something that's new. We haven't done a ton of licensing, Mm -hmm. especially before. And so now we're like getting into a a lot of it and what feels like recently, it's all started to pick up. So can you walk through, walk the listeners through the different licensing and business opportunities that have come your way and hit your inbox and just how you have worked through them and the ones that we've agreed to and are now yeah. public. Yeah, I think this is one of my favorite parts about running a creator-led company is that it's so new. So the opportunities and the revenue opportunities keep on changing and the way we make money keeps on evolving and we have multiple lines of revenue and the ones that are, you know, growing, it could change by quarter or by year which revenue stream there's more opportunity in at the moment. So As Maddie said, like the majority of our revenue comes from advertising. But this year we have really opened up um, the gates for new like content licensing and what we're calling like custom activations or custom partnerships. And I've been working on a lot of those deals. So I think Jimmy talked a little bit about the Dan Patrick deal. Um, I could give some insight from my perspective. Yeah, Uh, This deal was we started conversations in August of last year. Um, I heard that they were looking for more shows to bring into the Dan Patrick network. And I worked um, with their, their team there submitting different shows. They really wanted something that was national presence. That was like um, general sports talk or talking about one of like the major sports. And they were really excited about working with someone that like has proven to do this before, you know, that knows how to build an audience. So we were really excited to go through this deal. I think financially it made a lot of sense for us. Um, And how it works is we're giving over the sales rights and we're exclusively licensing Jimmy's Three Things and Wake and Jake to the Dan Patrick Network. And what we get out of that is... um, funding for those shows, but then also we were excited about the exposure and tapping into Dan Patrick's audience who probably skews a little bit older than like the typical John Boy Media audience. 
And then we were excited about the learnings that we would receive from being part of a huge podcast network like iHeart, right? And like they do things differently than us. They sell ads differently than us. They promote shows differently than us. And, um, you know, it's not like we were just going to like mimic what they were doing. But I think that we have learned some things and we've incorporated some of what they yep. have been doing, like the feed drops and aggregating yep. shows onto one RSS or a podcast feed into the way that we distribute our shows. Yep. So all around, like that has been a huge success on all fronts and we'll continue to see where it goes. Did I miss anything on that? No, I okay. think that was very well cool. said. Another one that we have and is coming soon is uh, our warehouse games. Oh yeah, so I can't announce the no no, no official partner yet, but one of the things we're really excited about is Warehouse Games has gotten a lot of interest from bigger, uh, more traditional types of media companies that are looking for more engaging content that is catered towards a younger sports fan. And we invested so much into Warehouse Games, like we the production style is really high quality. And for YouTube, um, it, it, it's really helped us build an audience there. But I think what is cool is that these bigger, more traditional companies have shown interest mm -hmm. in it because it's quirky and fun, but yep. also it looks legit and we have like a legit production going on. So we are working with a partner right now to um, transform the warehouse games and cut them up so it could be distributed on linear TV. Um, which is really cool. You see very few creators cross that kind of digital first now to linear model. Um, yeah. I think that's something we'll see more of, but I think it will open up more doors for us and like get us more exposure to, to a new audience. A hundred percent. Yeah. I feel like I'm really excited and it, I feel like it's just a really cool milestone for John Boy Media as a business because the headlines that go out, it's like, Oh, Mr. Beast is joining a uh, linear. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, he's Mr. Beast. Right. But like, exactly. We've proven that we are capable, more than capable of doing that um, within our walls. And like the whole team that's doing this work for us is also internal. It's not like we need oh, know, yeah. outside help to do it. Oh, either. exactly. Like yeah. we did the deal like a hundred percent ourselves. Yeah. Um, these conversations have been going on, you know, for multiple years kind of we've just gotten on people's radar with the yeah. content that we're producing and yeah i'm really excited i think this is like such a like moment in time when this when this deal happens knock on wood it yeah. should be close knock on wood. <laughs> um i had skipped over the DraftKings network mm -hmm. now that talking baseball has gone onto their network correct oh yeah so talking baseball the midweek episode yep. is on DraftKings network which is a cool content licensing opportunity for us um again like the extra distribution um they are you know paying us to license that midweek episode so that's uh, from the business perspective that's really a high margin deal for us yep. because we've already paid to produce the content so now it's just basically more top line revenue for us which is awesome um and then another I guess there's two more things that we're really mm -hmm. focused on in, in not only growing the revenue, like you said, but also uh, growing community with Snapchat, which we've mentioned. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm but where were you like in the Snapchat, like communications? Were you speaking to Snapchat? And yes. Everything? So we okay. were spe I was speaking to Snapchat. They were kind of telling us their strategy for the future that they're going to um, invest more in these like public profiles and the, uh, behind the scenes, like in the moment story, like content is where Snapchat is going to invest a lot of their time and resources. They still have like the discover feed, which is for more like produced shows or sure. series. And I don't think that is, um, as uh, big of a priority for them in the future. So I was really pushing the team to start Snapchat. I think that even though that we, we can't monetize it right now, it is where young audiences it's where a new audience is we didn't have a presence there and i think that the audience building and the the connection that we can build on snapchat is really strong because it's um you know 
lot of behind the scenes, raw, authentic, like you see the inner workings yeah. of how we do business. You see the inner workings of like how the personalities interact to each other. So yes. I think from a community builder, um, it has a lot of value. So much. And I think it's already something that, oh, let's put whatever we're putting on Snapchat. Let's put on like Instagram yeah. stories as well. Um, now, super important question. Mm -hmm. Courtney, have you ever had a Snapchat streak before? What's that? No. Okay, so no. No. That mean, have you ever sent a Snapchat? Or is this just beyond? I mean, maybe like years maybe. ago. Okay. <laughs> but a Snapchat streak is like when you are snapping somebody back yeah. and forth. And then you snap for... 150 days in a row. Oh my God. Your streak would be 150. Oh my God. So does the app track that? Or yes. this is, oh, yes, okay. The app, okay. The app Got tracks it. it. And so, like, back in the day when I was, would use Snapchat, this is like college times. Yeah. Um, people would like very much so care about what your streak was. And also, it was like, oh, you have a streak with this person. Like, do you like them type of Oh, vibe, okay. You know? It was like flirting. Right. So, when say like 23 hours had passed since your last snapchat it would get like a timer emoji like hey your streak's about to end oh, like you yeah, send yeah, yeah. <laughs> so congratulations I, oh uh, <laughs> trust me i um i figured that snapchat was uh, a little after uh Courtney's oh you're calling me old times no no <laughs> not at all not it's at all. all good i had poking on facebook oh yeah. you don't even remember that probably. no i did okay i okay. did <laughs> I um I poked and got <laughs> poked. Um all right, the the last part of the show mm -hmm. here we have five quick questions that came from our community last week. Remember, if you have any questions that have, you know, come up in your mind as as we've discussed things uh throughout this episode, leave them in the comment section below now. If you do not have any questions, go down and say something nice about Courtney because she is yes. so kind to come and on I'm the nervous. show. I'm nervous. Don't be mean. No, <laughs> do not be mean. That's for sure. Um, but no need to be nervous. Um, first question came from John Nepshield, and it was perfect because it is super business focused, which is your area of expertise. Uh, John asked, what is one production or business practice that you wish you imp implemented sooner? So this one's like kind of a boring answer, but just more structure in general, more structure around meetings. We have a set cadence for all hands. Now we do quarter mid quarter ones. And then like uh, post game, what we call them like post game recaps, like after the quarter concluded. And I think for a while we were just really nervous to implement anything that we thought was too businessy or corporate -y because we got this big like ick feeling from it and we thought we were like too cool for it and then we started realizing that realizing that like as you get bigger like this stuff actually helps so right. <laughs> we should have done that a little bit sooner but we can still put like fun twists yes on it. yes we try to do it in our own way <laughs> yes also like jake goes and presents in at least for some amount of time during all these all yeah. hands and He's just a natural at making things. Oh my God. I love corporate. having like a Jake moment. I'm yeah. like, we need this always. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. The next question comes from Mitch or Mitchell. He, they said, would you ever consider putting out the graphics that are on your shirts on prints instead? Um, he says that he would buy multiple prints. And then I just thought this was funny. A reply from uh, Aaron. He said, I love the World Champs Waffle House design when the Braves won the World Series. Wanted it as a blanket instead. And I asked and they added it. For all I know, I may be the, <laughs> I may own the only one. But I love that. I love that he requested something he wanted. Yeah. And like we made it for him. Yeah. Like that's it, great. It would also be so funny if he's the only one that owns <laughs> I'm this. I'm going plan. to check now. <laughs> yeah. Um but yes, this is in our plans. So we are actually designing a collection right now that is going to be like MLB stadiums. We're gonna start with those, mm -hmm. putting those on prints. I think we're gonna launch with like thirty different what is that the light? <laughs> and um some of the MLBPA license designs. We don't have the rights mm. to for like posters. We just have shirts and t-shirts and sweatshirts, I think. So we would have to work that out with them. But yeah, we're going to test that because we've seen this in like some of the customer surveys and feedback mm -hmm. that we've got that, um, yeah, there's a demand for this. Cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, I did not realize the like inner workings of the MLB PA deal yep. that we don't yeah. have that specific. Yes, yeah, so you get it like per product. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're saying a pair of socks that's out. Yeah, that's probably out. 
Damn. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question comes from Josiah. It's about Talking Yanks and Aaron Boone. He said that he loves the Talking Yanks videos with Boone. Um, and he was wondering, is the booking for that primarily made through Boone or through the Yankees? So his hypothetical and mm-hmm. the Yankees are playing out of their mind. So this is a complete hypothetical. If the Yankees <laughs> ever moved on from Aaron Boone, would you have a similar format with the new manager? So the answer to the first question is it's done directly with Boone. Um, we worked this out with Boone's agents. Uh, the Yankees are not involved at all. And I think the answer to the second question, if the Yankees ever moved on from Boone, uh, that would be up to Jimmy and Jake. I think like if they thought the content was going to be good and if they thought there was going to be value of having them on the show, I guess I think we would be open to it, but that would be like a Jimmy and Jake content decision. And it wouldn't be like if we were working with the Yankees for Aaron Boone, Yeah, it would be more of a like, oh, Boone is done. This new person's coming yeah. in. It wouldn't be that. It would be going to the new manager's agent. Agent, and yes, out. yes. And doing like a side deal. Like, right directly with the manager makes sense Mm -hmm. all right two more quick ones before we get out of here the next question comes from robert who said where are the last two bandwagon blue shirts okay courtney you can't address this but i can i'm sorry we did not post (laughs) three of the last four bandwagon blue shirts uh there were a few just bad instances like jimmy was on the world cup Mm -hmm. the last game they lost the one game we were all very tired for etc but lo and behold, we are all very sad that that is now over. Um, I don't know what that last episode would have been like. We had ta- we had texted about it. And the one idea was to open the show and say like, oh, the Rangers yeah. lost the series to the Panthers. And then the remaining nine minutes and 50 seconds, just talk about Aaron Jones as if it like wasn't <laughs> like didn't happen. Um, but our bad. But um, the larger question at hand here is about just balancing content. Mm-hmm. Um Robert said, I know that you guys have had a lot on your plate uh, with baseball season, and I imagine it's hard making side content a priority sometimes. How do you guys decide on balancing this kind of stuff? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, first and foremost, if something has ads on it or got sponsored, um, we prioritize that content yep. because we have to deliver for our community, but also our advertisers. Yep. And then we're really trying to do a better job of freeing up some of the creators' schedules so that they can do content that gives them energy and is a passion project and is audience builders. And I think that's what Bandwagon Blue Shirts was. Yes. Um, Jimmy, like, loved doing it. Mm-hmm. I would sometimes, like, listen to the episodes, and I had no idea what was going on, but they would be in such a good mood that yeah. it put me in a good mood. Yeah, and I'm yeah, just yeah. like, I want to be here laughing with you. And um, it's great, like, to do just this content that kind of gives the creators this, like, fun high, but it's also connects with the community and is um, low lift in production. So, yes. yeah, pri- trying to prioritize the like, integrating more of that type of content in. Yeah. And I think that you hit it on the end. One of our goals is that when we are doing these things that maybe they don't have an advertiser yet, right? Content that doesn't have an ad, but is scratching a creative itch for one of our creators is, yeah, let's make that as good as possible. Quality content, of course, but also while being smart about how we're using production and Mm -hmm. like ensuring that it is a low, lower lift. Yeah, for Um, sure. Yeah. Which bandwagon blue shirts was. Speaking of laughing, though, during bandwagon blue shirts, some of the hardest times I've laughed are just (laughs) listening to them. Um, All right. Last one is not so much a question for you, but I'm happy to answer as it's a quick one. Paul McConnell asked a question about breakdowns. Does MLB give you access to other camera angles that us fans don't have access to on TV or do different stations give different angles? And yes, it is the latter of those two. So, uh, the way Jimmy makes breakdowns, uh, there's a behind the scenes video on this uh, channel. If you go check that out, he does a great job of showing the in-depth nature of grabbing both uh, feeds. So the Orioles and the Blue Jays, if they were playing a game, they have two different broadcasts, which those might overlap a lot of the time, but they do show, especially for breakdown things where it's like showing shots of the dugout those they'll like cut to different things and basically double up the coverage of the moments that matter the most for breakdowns. So yeah, Jimmy's just going based off of what's available on TV. Um, no special access from MLB. And, um, I think that's like kind of a pride point in that content of like, I don't, 
I don't need like special access. Yeah. I'm like making awesome content with what's given mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to do so under fair use, which is cool and fun. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for all of your questions. Like I said, I'm sorry to bombard you, but for the third time, leave all of your comments, questions down below. Um, our special guest host next week will be able to answer and anything that they can, I will do my best to answer as well. But Courtney, thank you so, so much for being with us. I Thanks hope you had fun. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Good. I'm glad. And how does Jimmy end the shows? Oh, my God. Meeting adjourned? No, meeting adjourned. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Bye. <laughs>